of God in major world in religions. Major world religions. In, major world religions. <laughs> in all the scriptures of the major world religions is that the followers of that religion, they believe that he's the God for themselves as well as for the others. If you are to understand the concept of God in any religion, we should not observe what the followers of that religion do. To understand the concept of God in any religion, we have to try and understand what the scriptures have to speak about Almighty God. Let's discuss the concept of God and Sikhism. Though Sikhism, it is not a major world religion, it has a huge following. And it is an offshoot of Hinduism. It was founded by Guru Nanak in the late part of the 15th century in the land of Pakistan and northwestern India called Punjab, the land of the five rivers. And Guru Nanak Sahib, he was born in a Hindu Kshatriya family. That is a warrior caste family. And the holy scriptures for the Sikhs is the Guru Granth Sahib, also known as Adi Granth. The word Sikh is derived from the root word Sisya, which means disciple. Therefore, Sikhism has got 10 Gurus. The first and the founder is Guru Nanak Sahib. And the 10th Guru is Guru Gobind Singh. Every Sikh, according to Sikhism, has to maintain five Ks. The first K is the Kesh. That is the uncut hair which all the gurus keep. The second K is the kanga, that is the comb which is used to keep the hair clean. The third K is the kala, that is the metal or steel metal which is used for strength. The fourth K is the kripan, that is the dagger which is used for self defense. And the fifth K is the kacha, that is the long drawers or underwear which is used for agility. Every Sikh, according to Sikhism, has to maintain these five Ks. And if you ask any Sikh, regarding the concept of God in Sikhism, the best reply he can give you is quote to you the Mool Mantra, the fundamental creed of Sikhism. That is mentioned in the first volume of the Guru Granth Sahib, first chapter, first verse. That is called the Japuji. That Almighty God, He is great and compassionate, who is free from fear and hate. The unmanifest form of Almighty God in Sikhism is Ek Omkara. And the manifest form is Omkara. And there are various attributes and descriptions given to Almighty God in the sacred scriptures of the Sikhs. It says that Almighty God is Akal, that is the eternal. He is Kartar, that is the creator. He is Satnama, that is the holy name. He is Sahib, that is the Lord. He is Parwar Digar, that is the cherisher. He is Kareem, that is the beneficent. He is Rahim, that is the merciful. He is Wahi Guru, that is the one and true Almighty God. These are the various descriptions given to Almighty God in Sikhism. Sikhism, it is a strictly monotheist religion. It is against idol worship. Sikhism does not believe in Autar. That is Almighty God incarnating. Almighty God taking the form of human being. And we know that Guru Nanak Sahib, he was influenced by Saint Kabir. And many students, they learn the famous couplets of Saint Kabir in their schools. And one of the couplets they learn are, Tukme Samiran Sab Kare, Sukme Kare Na Koi, Jo Sukme Samiran Kare, that during trouble people remember God but no one remembers God during peace and happiness the person who remembers God during peace and happiness why should trouble touch him and a similar message is mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Zumur chapter number 39 verse number 8 
واذا مس الانسان ضر دعا ربه منيبا اليه ثم اذا خوله نعمه منه نسي ما كان يدعو اليه من قبل وجعل لله ينداد ليضل عن سبيله قل تمتع بكفر قليل انك من اصحاب النار that when trouble touches a man he cries out to his lord asking for forgiveness but when he has peace and happy times he forgets allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he forgets his lord thus misleading others on the wrong track so if you read the sacred scriptures of sikhism you should understand the concept of god in sikhism let's discuss the concept of god in zoroastrianism zoroastrianism it is not a major world religion and it has a very less following less than 130000 most of them coming from bombay it claims to be one of the oldest religion it originated two and a half thousand years ago and it was founded by zoroaster in the land of persia zoroastrianism is also called as parsiism and the followers that is the zoroasts or the parsis they are called as fire worshipers almighty god in zoroastrianism is called as ahura mazda ahura means god or lord and mazda means wise therefore ahura mazda means the wise god and there are various descriptions given to almighty god in the sacred scriptures of the zoroasts or the parsis that is the dasati and the avesta it says that almighty god he is one and only he has got no beginning nor has he got an end nothing resembles him he has got no father nor has he got a son nor has he got any wife and you cannot see almighty god with your naked eye you cannot comprehend almighty god and he is closer to us than our own self these are the various descriptions given to almighty god in the dasatir and there are various attributes also given to almighty god in the avesta he is called as a creator in yasna chapter number 31 verse number 7 and 11 yasna chapter number 44 verse number 7 yasna chapter number 50 verse number 11 yasna chapter number 51 verse number 7 he is called as the greatest in yasna chapter number 33 verse number 11 yasna chapter number 45 verse number 6 he is called as a beneficent in yasna chapter number 33 verse number 11 in yasna chapter number 48 verse number 3 almighty god in the parsi scriptures is called as bountiful in yasna chapter number 43 verse number 4 5 7 9 11 13 50 yasna chapter, yes, chap yes, chap chapter number 44 verse number 2 yasna chapter number 45 verse number 5 yasna chapter number 46 verse number 9 yasna chapter number 48 verse number 3 these are the varied descriptions given to almighty god in zoroastrianism or parsiism let's discuss the concept of god in the semitic religions the major among the semitic religions are judaism christianity and islam let's discuss the concept of god in judaism it is mentioned in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 6 verse number 4 Moses peace be upon him says Shama Israilo aduna ilaha illa anta khad yaro Israel the lord our god is one lord it is mentioned in the book of Isaiah chapter number 43 verse number 11 i even i am the lord and there's no one like me it is mentioned in the book of Isaiah chapter number 45 verse number 5 i am the lord and there's no one else and there's no god besides me It is mentioned in the book of Isaiah chapter number 46 verse number 9 I am God and there's none else I am God and there's none like me It is mentioned in the book of Exodus chapter number 20 verse number 3 to 5 Almighty God says thou shall have no other god besides me thou shall not make any graven image of any likeness of any thing in the heaven above in the earth beneath in the water beneath the earth thou shall not bow down to them nor serve them for i thy lord thy god is a jealous god and a similar message is mentioned in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 5 verse number 7 to 9 
that thou shall have no other God besides me. Thou shall not make any graven image of any likeness of anything in the heaven above, in the earth beneath, in the water beneath the earth. Thou shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, thy Lord, thy God, is a jealous God. So if you read the Jewish scriptures, you shall understand the concept of God in Judaism. Before I discuss the concept of God in Christianity, I'd like to make a few points clear. That Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslim and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is there are many Christians who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that is your almighty God. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him said, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29. My father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28. I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, for I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of my Father, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Think not, I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For if anyone breaks one jot or tittle of the law of the commandments, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. For if anyone keeps the commandments and teaches men to do so, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He never said that if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, believe that I am God, believe that I claim divinity. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, rather said that if you want to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that the words that you hear are not my words, but my Father's who has sent me. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3, that this is eternal life, that you may know that there is one God, and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, who thou hast sent. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16 and 17. A man approached Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and said, O oh, good master, what good thing shall I do that I shall attain eternal life? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies and says, Why thou call it me good? There is only one good, and that is Almighty God. And if you want to enter eternal life, you must keep the commandments. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never said that if you want to enter eternal life, believe that I am God, believe that I claim divinity, Believe that I died on the cross for the sins. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, rather said that if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, 
you must keep the commandments. You must obey each and every commandment that Moses, peace be upon him, bought. It is clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Almighty God says, Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by himself and your witness to it. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by himself and your witness to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. He was one of the mightiest messengers of God. And if you read, he repeated verbatim what was said by Moses, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Shama Israelo Aduna Ilahainan Yoro is wild. The Lord, our God, is one. Lord. So when you read the Christian scriptures, the Bible, you shall understand the concept of God and Christianity. Let's discuss the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Qul huwallahu ahad. Say he is Allah, the one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute, the eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kufwan ahad. And there is nothing like unto him. And if anyone says that so and so candidate is God, and if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims, we have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The first is, Qul huwallahu ahad. Say he's Allah, the one and only. Second, Allahu samad. Allah, the absolute, the eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kufwan ahad. And there is nothing like unto him. This surah ikhlas, it is the touchstone of theology. Theo in Greek means God. And logi means study. Thus, theology means study of God. Like how, if you want to buy or sell gold, before doing that, you will go to the goldsmith and verify the gold, whether it is 24 karat gold or whether it is 22 karat gold or whether it is not gold at all because all that glitters is not gold. Similarly, the God which you're worshipping, put him to the test of Surah Ikhlas, put him to the touchstone of theology and if he passes the test, then the God which you're worshipping is the true God. Many people say, that Bhagwan Rajnish is Almighty God. Let's put this Bhagwan Rajnish to the rest of Surah Ikhlas. The first is, Qul Huwallahu Ahad. Say He is Allah, the one and only. Was Bhagwan Rajnish one and only? There are several people who have claimed divinity, and especially from our country, India, there are thousands who have claimed divinity. So He's not one and only. But someone might say he's unique, he's one and only. The second test is Allah Samad, Allah the Absolute, the Eternal. Was Bhagwan Rajneesh absolute and eternal? We know from his biography that he was suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. The third test is Lam Yalid Walam Yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. We know Bhagwan Rajnish, he was born in the state of Madhya Pradesh. He had a mother and he had a father. And later on, he goes to USA and in the state of Oregon, he starts his village called as Rajnishpuram. And he takes thousands of Americans for a ride. Later on, the American government, they imprisoned Bhagwan Rajnish. And Bhagwan Rajnish was saying that the American government, they were slow poisoning him. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. 
and later on the American government they kick Bhagwan Rajnish out of America and he comes in the state of Maharashtra in the city of Pune and he starts his village and if you go on a Samadhi it is mentioned Osho never born never died but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990 they forgot to mention on that Samadhi that he was not granted visas to 21 different countries of the world imagine Almighty God requiring visas to travel to different countries of the world and the Archbishop of Greece said that if you do not throw Rajnish out of the country we shall burn his house as well as the house of his disciples and the last test is so stringent that it does not befit anyone but the only true almighty God the moment you can compare God to anything in this world he is not God we know Bhagwan Rajnish he had two eyes two ears a nose and he had a white beard and he wore a white robe the moment you can compare God to anything in this world he is not God for example if people say that you know Almighty God he's a thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger you might be knowing the person Arnold Schwarzenegger the person who won the title Mr. Universe the strongest man in the world the strongest man in the universe the moment you can compare God to anything in this world he is not God and there is nothing like unto him whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger or whether it be King Kong or whether it be Dara Singh the moment you can compare God to anything in this world he is not God this Surah Ikhlas chapter number 112 verse number 1 to 4 is the touchstone of theology and I would request the brothers and sisters out here that the God which you're worshipping put him to the test of Surah Ikhlas and if he passes the test then the God which you're worshipping is the true God if he does not then he's not the true God oh, people of the world.